Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss Telemedicine Practice Guidelines of India. This guideline was released by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on 25th March 2020. Myself, Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Head of Telemedicine Center, Professor of Psychiatry, Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. If you require any legal opinion, please do contact Advocate. This presentation is not a substitute for legal opinion. And also I request you, please do refer to the original document of telemedicine practice guidelines available on Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Please do regularly check if there are any updates on this guidelines. The background, we have reached planet Mars, but not our rural population with regard to healthcare services. There are many reasons. The doctors have been very apprehensive to use telemedicine services because of legal issues. At the same time, there are many state medical councils have notified telling that telemedicine is illegal. But however, in the background of coronavirus infection, pandemic, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare have come up with this telemedicine guidelines. It's a long awaited guideline. This telemedicine guideline, which was released on March 2020, was done by the Board of Governors under the National Medical, National Medical Commission. This guideline is a part of Appendix 5 of Indian Medicinal Council Act. Now the question is, what is the validity of this guideline under the National Medical Commission Act 2019? National Medical Commission Act 2019, Section 61.2 clearly mentions that if there are any guidelines, standards, and also any regulations notified under IMC and it has not been uh, changed under the National Medical Commission Act, continues to hold good. So from the legal point of validity, it is a valid legal document. Does this guideline discusses the telemedicine practice in India comprehensively? No, the guidelines are very clearly, explicitly excluded certain things. The hardware, software, infrastructure, building, maintenance have been not discussed and it is outside the scope of this guideline. At the same time, the data management will be the owner of the data. How it will be maintained has been excluded from this guideline. Digital technology like Conducting surgical and invasive procedures remotely has been prohibited. And also, using of artificial intelligence for diagnosis and prescribing medication has been prohibited. However, AI can be used for assisting the doctors. The telemedicine guidelines also does not discuss us about research and evaluation in this guideline. And finally, it clearly says that it does not provide any kind of guidelines regarding doing consultation outside the jurisdiction of India. For example, doctor sitting in India would like to consult somebody in Canada. That has not been discussed and does not give any kind of uh, guidelines to the such kind of practices. Who can provide telemedicine consultation? Registered medical practitioner. Who is a registered medical practitioner is basically who is enrolled in state medical register or the Indian medical register under the IMC Act of 1956. What are the prerequisite for RMP to undertake telemedicine or teleconsultation? The prerequisite for an RMP is to that he has to uphold the same ethics and legal principles which occurs in in-person consultation or real consultation or face-to-face -face real consultation. The same standard and guidelines will be he has to uphold and same will be applicable. Along with this, there will be an online course which will be made available subsequently by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Every RMP needs to undergo training and he has to pass that some course. During that inter period, Please do follow the guidelines till the courses are notified by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. 
can i provide a telemedicine, telemedicine consultation to a patient residing in another state yes under this guideline a rmp is entitled to provide telemedicine consultation to any to a patient at any part of india for example a patient sitting in karnataka can request for a consultation for a doctor who is sitting in delhi so now this issue is been settled once for all under this guideline what are the guiding principles of this teleconsultation the basic guiding principle is the patient has the right to discontinue the teleconsultation and he may say i want to see the doctor in person so he has all the right to stop it at any time at the same time the doctor or the rmp also has been given a full discretion under his what we call it as guiding principle of his consultation he may choose not to continue telemedicine consultation because it may harm the patient at the any stage or at the any level of telemedicine consultation the doctor can refer him for in person consultation so that has been made very very clear at the same time he also can decide what kind of mode of communication he can choose he can choose either text email audio video or a mixed method he can choose at the same time he can also call for in person consultation so the next question which arises is can either of the party remain anonymous during the teleconsultation for example the patient may says i don't want to comment on video consultation can it be possible no the current telemedicine consultation prohibits that both the parties the rmp and the patient need to recognize each other and they have to identify each other the doctor has been casted with an obligation he should confirm the patient identity by asking for certain government valid registered id for example aadhar card maybe pan card maybe dl various other photo id he may ask he may also ask for age proof also if by chance the rmp is not convinced about the identification proof he may not go ahead with the teleconsultation so now it is a responsibility of the patient to provide a valid proof before he asks for any teleconsultation at the same time every rmp has to make efforts to identify himself to the patient with his name designation qualification and also what is his specialization so this is very essential that means both the parties need to identify each other what are the different methods used in telemedicine consultation and what are the validity in india in india as per this guideline text messages like sms email have been recognized images a patient can take ct scan and send it to the doctor audio he can make a phone call video tele video consultation and by digital data connected with the devices for example patient may send or a doctor may send the ecg data through telemedicine or else the rmp may ask for mixed method he can ask the he may call make a phone call and then send a mail and then he also do does video consultation at the same time this guideline do not prohibit any media for example it does not say don't use social media the main reason being is the telemedicine is client centric or patient centric the telemedicine should be so easy for the patient to use like whatsapp facebook or any other media which is available easily so that means the doctor should also be uh, ready to use these medias so at this point of time telemedicine guidelines do not prohibit any social media and it is client centric and it is for the purpose of helping the patient so please do understand for that reason this telemedicine guideline is one of the best in the world to conclude telemedicine guidelines released by ministry of health and family welfare is a frontline weapon against covid-19 against coronavirus rmp can now use this telemedicine for giving uh, consultation online and as for my opinion this is one of the best guidelines in the world and it is going to be the game changer especially with regard to how we practice medicine
And let me remind you, this is going to make a paradigm shift in the practice of medicine. Thank you. Please do use telemedicine.